uh, six years here at Auburn. Uh, you know, we're uh, looking forward to the season. You know, I really felt like last year we were close uh, winning the SEC West, which is the toughest division in college football. You know, coming one game within um, you know, the, the Final Four, which was, was a big goal of ours. And we got a lot of guys coming back. We have the majority of our staff coming back. So uh, because of the experience, you know, we have a very hungry team and uh, really looking forward to getting the, the season started. We'll start with questions all the way in the back right of the camera position. Hey, Coach. Back here. Hey, uh, I know you guys are disappointed to have lost to UCF at the end of last season, but what was your reaction to the team actually claiming to be national champions? And do you feel like that says anything about where the playoff is right now? No. You know, I, I really, um, all I can tell you is, um, you know, we didn't, we didn't play our best game that day in the bowl game. We were very disappointed with that. But you've got to give uh, UCF uh, uh, all the credit. Uh, very good team, very good coach. Um, you know, I don't get into the debate with all that uh, as far as you know, championships and all that. Over here to the left side on the second row, all the way in. Coach Deshaun Davis was just in here. I wonder if you could talk about his leadership during his time at Auburn. Yeah, Deshaun Davis is one of my all-time favorites. Uh, you know, this is a guy that tore his knee up his senior year. Uh, we just knew there was something special about him. Uh, he plays with a chip on his shoulder. He carries himself that way. And, He's been told a lot that he's too short, he's too slow, he's too this. And uh, right now he's one of the better linebackers in the SEC. And really, he's like a coach on the field. And I know Coach Steele really relies on him a lot as far as all the communication and everything that goes with that. Fine young man, has his degree in hand. He's going to be very successful in life. And uh, very honored to be able to bring uh, you know, Deshaun here with me to represent Auburn at SEC Media Day. So down here to the front row in the aisle. Hey, Coach. I was wondering if you could comment on the headset rule that's going to be implemented yeah. this fall. And are, have, has, have you uh, had any conversations with any coaches that like this rule? Uh, I've not heard one coach that likes the rule. Um, you know, there is talk about adding uh, three headsets from the 20, which I think is very positive and internal. Like I said a couple of months ago, my biggest concern is the uh, quality of the game, you know, because you know, a lot of times you have guys that need to be on the headset just to chart, uh, to put down information that can actually help with adjustments. You know, obviously halftime adjustments. You know, you have to have all the information, offensive, defensively, and special teams to come together and gather that information. So my big deal was the quality of the game. And, uh, you know, I really feel strong that it needs to be that unlimited and let each coach, there's really not an advantage. Um, to have headsets in this day and time. And most programs have enough money to have as many as they want. Um, you know, but uh, the three is better than 20, but um, you know, it's going to be a challenge you know, as far as staffs and the way they operate and the information that they get. Go to the camera position on the left side, front row. Coach, you really kind of utilized Jordan Peters last season in numerous different ways to corner star safety. What role do you see him playing this year, and how much do you think he'll contribute? Yeah, Jordan Peters has the flexibility to play all. You know, uh, he played nickel primarily in the spring. Uh, you know, you're talking about a, a freshman that got big game experience. You know, he made a big play in the Iron Bowl on third down. And he's a very talented young man, and I know Coach Steele has a, has a good plan for him. But he's flexible enough to play all three, which most of our DBs are, and that's the way that Kevin likes it. Go down here in the front row, all the way to the right. You, or Deshaun said that when he has success, it's usually because Dontavious has had success in front of him. Do you feel like your defensive line, and specifically Dontavious, is overlooked? And how have you continued to make that a strength on your defense? Yeah, Dontavious is definitely overlooked. There's no doubt about that. You know, he started for three years, fixed to be four. Uh, there's just a handful of guys I can remember in this league that they started up front for four years on the defensive side. He's done that, and uh, he's a very unselfish player. Deshaun is exactly right. You know, he creates double teams. Uh, very good in one-on-one -on -one, uh, pass rush when he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And, you know, he's one of our leaders. He could have came out early. And I think he had had a good chance of getting drafted. He chose to come back. He's going to get his degree, uh, I believe, here in two weeks. And very proud of him. And uh, you know, he's been a consistent leader for us his whole time here. Go to the camera position on the front row, almost right in the middle. Uh, Coach, Deshaun was in here talking about the game against Washington, you know, being kind of a playoff game right off the bat. Yeah. Obviously, it's important regardless because it's the next one for you guys, but how much do you stress the uh, need for a quick starter against a team like that? 
Well, I tell you what's going to be a great measuring stick. Uh, you're talking about a top 10 team. Uh, a lot of people are picking them to, to be in the final four, which they were a couple of years ago. Uh, they got their quarterback, same quarterback back, and running back is phenomenal. So it'll be a good measuring stick. It's a big game. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, you know, and, and we're looking forward to, to playing them. And, and I'll say this, we're glad to be back here in Atlanta. Uh, anytime you get a chance to play in the same venue that your conference championship game is played in, I think it's, it's very beneficial. And then the fact that, uh, you know, Auburn's just right down the road and, and we have a lot of alumni here in Atlanta. So uh, you know, we, we really like playing here. There's the camera position on the right side, front row. Coach, uh, Jared talked about his journey from Baylor to Juco to Auburn. Uh, what does that journey look like from your point of view? Uh, you know, we're glad he's at Auburn. Uh, you know, at, at Baylor, I believe he played four games. He played at a high level. There's a lot of expectations and a lot of pressure on him coming in last year. Um, you know, our offense grew, um, you know, and then towards the middle of the year, I felt like we were really clicking. And most of it had to do with his leadership and the way he managed the offense. And the fact that he's got a year under his belt in this league uh, gives us nothing uh, but positives coming in the, this year offensively. And then Chip Lindsey, who's offensive coordinator, they got a great relationship. They've been together, um, you know, in this league for a, a year in some huge games. And they know each other how they're going to react. And I just think it's a real plus, you know, having both those guys back for the second year. Go over here to the section on the right, third row now. Hey, Coach, your uh, your players described the LSU game last year as being kind of the lowest of the low, but it propelled them forward. What was the experience, uh, I guess, like for you? Yeah, well, they hit on the head. It, it really was the lowest of the low. We were uh, we were up 20 to nothing, and, and we let that one slip away. And that was a very uh, tough time. It's one of those times that you either do one or thing, one or two things. You fold your tent, or you rally together. And our team chose to rally together. A lot of negative noise coming at us from a lot of different directions. They they blocked it out, and they just took it one game at a time. And we played better ball each week. And obviously, the way that we ended the regular season, uh, you know, we were playing excellent football at that time. So, real proud of the way that that team handled that first. I don't think there's a whole lot of teams that could have done that. Well, you're standing in the back on the right side. Coach, two defensive players, Daniel Thomas and Marlon Davidson. Can you discuss their growth, their presence on the defense, and kind of what you expect from each of them this year? Yeah, of course, Marlon, you know, is uh, he started the last two years. He started as a true freshman, which is very rare, you know, on defensive line up front for us. And he's an impact player. I mean, I feel like he's one of the best players in our league. Daniel is a guy that's like a heat-seeking missile. I mean, he's a, he's a great tackler. And, um, you know, I really feel great about him in the safety position. He's one of our better special teams players. And, you know, both of those young men are just so, they're such fine character guys. And they're hard workers and just a joy to coach. Go over on the left side, standing in the back. Here, Coach, right here. Uh, coach, is there a position or positions that can benefit from his redshirt rule? And what would you like to see from Terry Stidham in the second year of the offensive system? You know, I think all coaches are excited about the red shirt rule. It gives it good, gives them more flexibility. I think it's better for the players, too. Um, you know, I think about injured players. You know, we've got the two receivers that tore ACLs. We'd like to get them back this year. We'll see where that goes, but that could be a possibility. And then I guess your last question was expectations for Jared. Um, you know, just, uh, you know, he's, yeah, I really believe he's ready to take that next step as a leader. And uh, I know he's hungry. And, um, I'm glad that, uh, that he's our quarterback. Come back here, standing on the left side. Uh, Christian's had an early enrollee from high school. How has he been adjusting to the game so far? Uh, very, very good. Uh, you know, he, he was here with us in the spring, like you said. He doesn't act like a freshman. Uh, he plays with a chip on his shoulder. Uh, in the spring game, he's covering Darius Slayton, you know, the fastest receivers in our league, and uh, there was no fear. That Coach Steele feels very good about him being in the mix, giving us depth. Uh, we think he's got a chance to be a very good football player, of course.